life. The prison service here is ineffective, even though there are more staff than inmates. It's one of the findings of yet another damning report, this time by the Criminal Justice Inspectorate, which insists industrial relations need to improve if major reform is to take place. Jane Lockery reports. In recent years, there have been dozens of reports complaining about the prison service here. Indeed, the high security jail at Magabry has been ranked as one of the worst in the UK. But the latest report from the Criminal Justice Inspection is one of the most critical. It concludes management failings mean the authorities are unable to deliver an effective prison service or real meaningful change, despite the fact there are almost 1,900 prison officers and 400 support staff guarding just 1,500 prisoners. I think overall we need to look at the number of officers that we have within the prison service and we need to think about what those officers do because this just isn't, isn't just about looking at the resources, it's about how those resources are applied. And what I would like to see is much greater engagement um, in what happens inside a prison because that's important in reducing offending. It costs £95,000 a year to house an inmate in Northern Ireland, compared to 45000 in England and Wales. Prison officers get paid more here too, £37,000 compared to almost twenty nine in the rest of the UK. The Prison Officers Association has described the report as sensationalist. Look at the amount of money that's been spent in McGabry with paramilitary prisoners, which is all taken into the equation. Whereabouts in, in Europe... Have they got paramilitary prisoners like we have got? They're not being fair to the prison officers and the people who manage the Northern Ireland Prison Service. The Justice Minister says while taking into account that 29 prison officers were killed in the Troubles, the case for fundamental reform is undeniable. Well, I think we were all aware that the prison service had big issues to be confronted when devolution happened. I said at the time it was one of the key issues that had to be addressed under devolution because it's not just an issue for the prison service and the minister, it's an issue for the executive as a whole, the assembly as a whole, the justice committee to look to to see how we make the changes that are needed. When the Justice Minister took office in May, he ordered an independent review into the prison service here. And while that five-member team is due to report back in the new year, the Justice Minister insists the reform of the prison system will take years to complete. Jane Lockery, UTV Live, McGabry. Well, I'm joined now by a former governor in the maze, William McKee. What's your response to this? Um, there's a, a lot of problems with the prison service. I mean, first of all, if we start with the, there's no chief executive. Um, there's no permanent governor in either McGilligan Prison or McGabry Prison. So really, we have a rudderless ship at the minute. So that's one problem. The other problem is prison officers haven't been recruited from 1994. So the current staff are institutionalised. Many of them still operate with their security hats on, whereas the prison population has now changed with the majority of prisoners being ordinary decent criminals. There's only 4% of the population are actually dissident prisoners. Yet we still have some 1,900 staff to guard 1,300, 1,400 prisoners. This is because it's a very labour intensive service and this is something that radically needs looked at. Unfortunately the Prison Officers Association is a very strong union and they've come in for a lot of criticism today but to be fair the agreements that they're sticking to are agreements that they were negotiated with prison service headquarters. Mm. So for any criticism they should also take their share of it. Well, I mean, this is just the latest report calling for changes in the prison service. Is what's needed a pattern-style review? Absolutely. It's something that I've been calling for now for a number of years. Um, I think the time of sticking our fingers in the dike have long since passed. I mean, we need actually to start and go in a full pattern-type review because it's the only way we're going to actually uh, deal with the many, many problems. The other thing as well, I mean, the service at the minute is suffering from recommendation overload. And the morale of staff and management is at an all-time low. Well, I mean, some three, 600 recommendations weren't picked up from previous reports. So, I mean, as, as all interest been lost, what's at the root of this? The difficulty is, to say, because staff are institutionalised, they will, and when left alone, will revert back to the system they're more comfortable with. So, I mean, as I spoke to Pauline McCabe during the week, okay. what we need is an internal oh. audit to ensure that not only are the recommendations implemented, but they don't fall back into the old ways again. OK, William McKee, there we must leave it. Thanks for joining us. Thank you very much. Well, as UTV revealed last night, the